I bring you greetings from New Jersey. If you could please turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. My name is Calder. Uh, my wife, Cassandra, and I have the honor and the privilege of serving the mighty region of New Jersey. And uh, today we have uh, something very special. My sister Latavia is going to share what the cross means to her. She's asked me to read the following scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2, picking up in verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And I give you Latavia. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Good morning, family and visitors. Um, uh, my name is Latavia, and I'm a part of the New Jersey region of the <laughs> International Christian Church. And I am honored to be sharing for communion today. And I just want to thank G <laughs> and Corey, Aaron and Charmaine, Calder, and Cassandra <laughs> uh, for allowing me to share what the cross means to me. Um, in, on, in all honesty, um, when I was asked to do the communion, um, my initial thought was, no, I cannot, because I had recently faced some challenges in my walk with God, which I have now moved past, but as I reflect on all that I have gone through, I realized that in those moments, I had to reflect on the cross in order to overcome the challenges I was facing. You know, um, I'm sure most of you have seen me around, but don't necessarily know much about me or how I was met and became a disciple. So, uh, backstory, um, I moved to the States from my home country in Jamaica. Uh, my home country, Jamaica, in 2016 at the age of 19. Uh, so I have been living here for like six years now. So November, it will be seven years I've been wow. living here. And I started studying the Bible through my brother, actually. So my brother was met by Jamie, who is now in the Bahrain <laughs> church. Um, and I was connected, and through that I was connected um, to Alyssa, connected with Alyssa, sorry. And I studied the Bible, Alyssa Swan. I studied the Bible and I was baptized March uh, 26 of 2020, guys. <laughs> So I was a COVID baby. Um, so prior to becoming a disciple, there was a period in my life that, I, that was just dark and I was really plagued with doubts about my life and insecurities about my capabilities. I honestly couldn't see the outcome of my life and I, I couldn't see the outcome of my life and what I wanted. I could see what everyone else around me wanted for me, but I couldn't see it for myself. Um, growing up, I had the support of my family. Um, everyone thought very highly of me. I was encouraged and I was reminded that I can do anything, I can be anything. The sky's the limit, you know, and I believed it. There was always what seemed like a high expectation placed on me to do great. And it wasn't pressure um, to be the best, it was out of love because my parents, my grandparents, you know, just my family, my friends, they wanted what was best for me and they wanted the best for me and to experience all that life had to offer. But as I got older, I started to have doubts. I was fearful of failing, uh, letting down those around me, you know, those in my life, my parents, my grandparents, um, my family members. And as a result, I looked to comfort and predictability, I would create a lane um, for my life and I would stick to it and I, I would never venture out. I would like create this bubble for myself. And because of my insecurities, I had about my life and what I wanted. It came to a point that I would self-sabotage because of how insecure I was in myself. Um, in my weakness and to my shame, I allowed these negative thoughts into my discipleship. 
And a few weeks ago, actually, I was struggling my faith because I started to doubt myself and where God has placed me. I got so into my head that I doubted God's plans for me and the dreams I have, you know, my kingdom dreams. I became insecure in my purpose. Um, I was lacking, lacking confidence in myself. I was doubting my decision I made to join ICCM. Um, to be a women's ministry leader. Um, I was wondering, how can I help anyone? You know, do I have what it takes? And through it all, like working through it, I remember the sermon that Michelle Williamson preached. Um, it was, their charge was mountain of, well, the, the, one of the charges were like mountain of doubt. And I remember she shared this quote. It says, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. And I needed to understand that my doubts were distracting me from God's dream. And it was weakening my spirit. Um, I did seek out therapy again um, because I had started therapy um, in the past, um, and I had stopped, but I did seek out therapy again to cope with these negative self-talks, but what I needed was God's word, you know, to replace these thoughts with God's promises. And I am so grateful for the women in my life in New Jersey, oh my gosh. They, they encouraged me, they really they spurred me on, and in those difficult moments, God used these women to remind me of who I am in Christ. Yeah. You know, they reminded me that I am a royal priest, sorry, a royal priesthood, that I am God's masterpiece, yeah. that he has called me to do greater things because I am made new in Christ. Yeah. I am so grateful for Jesus' sacrifice. You know, in my flaws, he chose me. In my insecurities, he called me to be, it's, he called me to be secure in him, and in my uncertainties, he has reassured me that he is trustworthy, and I can be sure that this life that he has planned for me, that he assured me of this life that he has planned for me long ago, Ephesians 2 verse 10, and so for me, the cross today means that I am chosen, you know. You know, I'm, I can be sure and secure and confident in God and who he is and who I am. And I'm just so grateful to God um, and his sacrifice. And I just want to encourage anyone who is studying the Bible or is, who is considering studying the Bible that... Um, just, just choose God. Like, whatever you're going through, whatever difficulties you're facing, whatever doubts you have if, in pursuing God, like, it's worth it. And it would be the best decision you've ever made because, you know, with God, God's give, God gives you a, a new purpose, a greater purpose for your life. And you just see how, he, how all of it will unfold for you. So thank you guys for allowing me to share. You know, as we reflect on the cross, as we eat the, the cracker, which represents Jesus' broken body, and as we drink the juice, which represents his spilled blood, I pray that you can come to the cross yourself and just reflect on all God has done for you, how he has chosen you. And as we choose to commune with him now, I pray that you can uh, just come to him with, with an open heart um, to, be re to receive everything that he has done for you, um, the sacrifice that he has done for us through his son, Jesus. And uh, pray, and as we go to prayer, um, just take that moment, that moment to, to connect with the cross. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we are just so grateful to be able to be in your presence this morning. Uh, you, the creator of the universe, the holiest of holies, uh, that you would choose to... And that we would be able to connect with you on such a special way. That you have chosen us that we are a royal priesthood just goes to show how much you love us. And I pray that as we uh, take the communion today, as we eat the cracker, as we drink the juice, that we too become broken before the cross and reflect on everything that you have done for us and that we can be renewed, refreshed, and re-strengthened. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.